Good morning, grade four. I hope everyone is doing great. Well, I am here with another recorded lesson. Let's start with a starter. So this is a girl named Ewa. She says, I know that three fourths or three quarters is equivalent to three eighths because the numerators are the same. Do you think she's correct? Do we find equivalency of fractions when the numerators are same? I think that is incorrect. Why? Because if we draw, let's say, if we draw three quarters, okay, that is a really not very nice uh, circle. I will make it again. Okay. So if I make a circle and I make four portions or make it divided into quarters so this portion is three quarters right only one quarter is left so is this equal to i'm going to divide my this shape into eight portions right so these are four portions And, okay, these are my eight portions. So I'm going to color the three portions. I will start from here. And that's it. This is my three-eighth. So do you think that I have shaded an equal amount of circle? Do you think these two fractions are equal? Well, clearly they're not. We don't find equivalency when the numerators are same. How do we find equivalency? We find equivalency when we see there is a pattern of multiplication. For example, if we are trying to find a fraction which is equivalent to 3 fourths or 3 quarters, we are going to, let's say, multiply this with 2. Okay. And then what do we do with the 4? We have to multiply 4 also with the same number. Remember, we did that yesterday's lesson which was equivalent fractions. So what is three times two? It is six. And what is four times two? It is eight. So now we can say that three quarters or three fourth is same as six eighths, all right? So this is how we find equivalency. One more thing that I would like to tell you here is that you can multiply three with any number. 3 quarters means not just 3, 3 quarters or this fraction with any number. For example, if I choose 3, then I have to multiply this also with 3. So that would be 9 by 12 or 9 twelfth. So this is how we find equivalency. We pick a number, we multiply the top number which is numerator and we multiply the bottom number which is the denominator with that same number. It's not going to happen that we are going to multiply the top number or the numerator with 3 and then we, you know, think of, oh, okay, we are multiplying this with 3. How about we multiply 4 with 4? No, that's incorrect. We are going to choose the same number which we are multiplying our numerator. It should be the same number uh, that should be multiplied with the bottom number. All right. I hope that was a quick recap of equivalent fractions. Now, our today's topic is fractions of amounts. And that is basically what type of fractions? Unit fractions. Now, that is a new type of fractions that we haven't covered. What kind of fractions did we cover so far? Well, we covered improper fractions. Right? Okay. I'm not going to write the full form, but anyways. Okay, let me complete it. Okay, improper fractions and we studied about proper fractions, right? And we studied about mixed numbers, right? These were the three types of fractions that we studied. Now, what was an improper fraction? This fraction was in which the numerator was bigger than the denominator, like this. What was the proper fraction? So the proper fraction was where 
uh, numerator is smaller than the denominator. This is a proper fraction. What was the mixed number? Mixed number was basically a whole number next to a fraction. So that is a mixed number. These were the three forms of fractions that we studied before, right? So what is unit fractions? Okay, now let's study about them. So before we learn about the unit fractions, let's focus on our learning objectives. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to use division to calculate fractions and its quantity, choose appropriate mental or written strategy to carry out calculations involving fractions, and you should be able to apply knowledge to create word problems related to a real life situation. All right. So what is unit fraction? So unit fraction has a numerator which is always one. For example, half. Half is a unit fraction, which is quite familiar. We have used half a lot in our previous lessons. Then we have one third. Then we have a quarter. Then we have a fifth, one fifth or fifth, you can say, one sixth, one eighth, one tenth. Well, do you think we missed a fraction here? Hmm, I know. I think we missed this fraction, one seventh, right? Well, that is also another type of unit fraction. So all the fractions which have a numerator of one is called a unit fraction. Well, that was easy to remember, right? Okay. Now what is fractions of amounts? So to calculate a unit fraction of amount, simply divide the amount by the denominator. Now what does that mean? Looks like complicated, but it's not. How? Well, if we have a unit fraction which is half, so what is half of 10? Well, you all know that. Without even actually calculating what is happening here, you would say 5, 5, 5. Well, yes, that is 5. But how did you get it? Let me explain it to you. So off means multiply here, okay? So off means multiply. So how about if I rewrite this thing into something else? For example, half, now this was off, now I'm going to replace off with the multiplication sign. Why? Because I said that off means multiply. So I'm going to replace off with a multiplication sign and then 10. Okay, that makes sense. Now I'm going to combine that. So 1 times 10 divided by 2. Okay, that's understandable also. Now this is 10, okay, I'm out of space, divided by 2. And that is equals to 5. Well, don't you think that is pretty straightforward here, right? So we just replace off with the multiplication sign. And then we just did some magic here. And we got 5, right? Now, let's do some more examples, you know, just to get get a good grip on the concept okay so this is we are explaining the same thing using arrows that we are basically dividing 10 with 2 okay now some more examples what is okay we did this one so this was there are 10 squares right and what is half of 10 which is 5 right so we have colored half of the half of the squares, which is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now another example. What is a quarter of sixteen? Okay. Uh, should we use pictures for this, or should we just use our previous method? How about we replace off with a multiply first? Okay. So I am going to write this as one quarter times 16. Now here I'm going to combine them. So one times 16 divided by 
4. Right? Now, I'm going to solve it further. 1 times 16 is 16 divided by 4. And that is equals to 4 because I know my 4's times table, right? So this is, this, all of this is equals to 4, right? Okay, now let me clear all the drawing and let's use some pictures. Okay, we got the same answer as 4. But how about we have some apples here? Now, how many apples are there? Well, there are. 16 apples when divided into four groups each group gets four right so this is how we again recheck our answer all right now we have another example what is one third of 12 again i am going to how about you pause my video over here right and come back to check your answer I'm going to use a, a multiplication sign here and then I am going to rewrite this using this multiplication sign. I am going to combine them and I am going to solve it again like this which is equals to 4. Okay, now let's check our work. Yes, so what are we doing? We are just dividing 12 by 3, right? Now we have 12 pretty stars and we have divided it into groups, three groups. So each group got 4. Well, I am multiplying 1 with 12, right? And then I'm dividing by 3. But you know what? You can skip this part and you can just do this part, 12 divided by 3. Because we already know that 1 multiplied by 12 is 12. So we can, you know, kind of skip this part. You understand that? Okay. Now, let's move on. We have a few examples here. Okay. So how about you can try it. For example, 24 divided by 4. We skip the multiplication part here. What do you think should be coming here? Now you can solve this question yourself and you can come, sorry, you can come back to check your answers, okay? All right, now I have shown you the answers. I hope you got them all correct. Now again, we have some more questions here. So it's one fifth of 15, okay? And this is one sixth of 18. Again, you can pause my video and Come back again to check your answers. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 18 divided by 6 is also 3. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 32 divided by 8 is 4. I hope you got all of them correct. Let's assess our learning objectives. So we are able to use division to calculate fraction and its quantity. Now, how about we choose appropriate mental or written strategy to carry out calculation involving fractions? Now, this is a word problem. So, Jake has 30 marbles. He gave one-fifth of marbles to his brother. So, how many marbles did he give to his brother? Again, remember that we have to calculate one-fifth of 30. So what we exactly are doing, we are just dividing 30 by 5, all right? So this is how you are going to solve this problem, which is equals to 6. I hope you got your answer correct. Now this was our second objective that we have just met. Now, okay, we cannot do the breakout room here, so I'm going to skip this one, but you can think of, instead of, uh, you know, uh, going into the groups, you can discuss with your sibling or family members and come up with a word problem. For example, you have 15 candies and you want to, to have one third of it. You want to keep one third of candies to yourself. So how many candies you have with, with yourself, okay? 
So just like that, you can think of a word problem and uh, maybe you can ask your elder brother or sister or a friend uh, to answer for you. And you, you should know your answer yourself just, you know, to check whether they are telling you the correct answer or no. All right, we're done with all three of our learning objectives. If you have any questions, you can always write it to me on my email address, which is bushra.noor at awis.edu.ph. Now, how about we relate our lesson to citizenship values? So how can you apply your knowledge about fraction of amount in your daily life? And do you think it is helpful to us? How or why? How about you give it a little thought and ask the same question from somebody you know? And you can always share your answer with me. I hope you enjoyed your lesson. Let's just have a quick recap of it using a key point which was to remember that unit fraction has a numerator of one and to calculate a unit fraction of amount, you just divide it by the denominator, okay? Wow, that star looks really happy. <laughs> Good job, guys. So I'll see you next time in the next lesson and take care, bye-bye.